So what was God to do about it? And Isaiah continues, For you have hid your face from us and gave us up to the power of our sins. That can be a very problematic uh, way of looking at the question of the Bible. And in fact, um, there are fundamentalist groups today, if you look up the website about the pandemic and the relation of the Bible to the pandemic, you will find websites that say, really what's happening is God is punishing the world for sinfulness. But I really don't think that that's what's going on here. And there was a wonderful article way back in March from, at the beginning of the pandemic, from um, Fintan O'Toole, and he asked the question, we are not kings of the world, he says, after all. That is the title of the article. And then he asked the question, well, what's going on? What, has, what is uh, the Bible saying to us about all this? And he says, the point of the biblical story of the plagues of Egypt, for example, is that the Pharaoh thinks he is all powerful. You know the story about the Pharaoh not letting the people go and plagues coming upon him so that in the end he has to let the people go. So the Pharaoh thinks that the world obeys his will, um, Finton says, and that there is nothing higher than his commands. And we can think of some Pharaohs in our world today, maybe. So he goes on to draw the parallel with our own world today. He says, <clears throat> We are not enslaved to nature anymore. You know, we think that we have got everything that the world can give us. We know we can go to Mars and the world. We seem to be masters of the world, kings of the world, as he puts it. We have made a world in which it is not God, however, who punishes us for our misdeeds because we are not the masters of the world. I remember once reading a, a book which the title was And the World Bites Back. In other words, when we go too far, when we don't look at the world as we ought, then the world comes back at us. Uh, so it is not God, he says, who punishes us for our misdeeds. We do that entirely for ourselves. It took us millennium to acquire the pride of conquerors we have only a few decades to learn the humility of survivors. But that still leaves the question of evil in our world. And how does the Bible deal with that question? Down through the centuries, there was the tendency to say that the good are rewarded and the wicked are punished. Very neat way of putting things. Um, so if you do good, you're rewarded. God will reward you. If you um, do evil, God will punish you. But within the Bible itself, there was a questioning of that attitude. For example, in the book of Job, you have Job saying to God, well, I was innocent, I was a good person, and here I am suffering. You know the story of Job, how he ha had so much, he had land and children, and he lost everything anyway. And um, when he lost everything, he said, blessed be the holy will of God. But that's only in the first two chapters of the book. Um, and the rest of the book, which is 40 chapters altogether, is really Job giving out to God because he has allowed him to suffer even though he was innocent. And so the whole question of innocent suffer, suffering is played out within the book of Job, trying to come to grips with why is there evil in the world? Why is there suffering? And Job has friends who come along to him, the famous Job's comforters, who try to say that, hi Job, you must be evil because you are suffering. And Job says, sorry, I can't be evil. Um, I am suffering innocently. And so he says, I have to have this out with God. Why am I suffering if I'm not evil? And so right throughout the, the rest of the book, he is trying to come to grips with um, why God would allow suffering. And eventually he says, well, 
I'll go and I'll meet God face to face and have it out with him. And eventually, God does meet him face to face, out of the whirlwind, as it puts it. But he doesn't give Job an answer to human suffering. What he does is bring Job around his wonderful world. He shows him all the uh, great animals of the world and all the uh, you know wonderful things that are in the world. It's almost like a David Attenborough film that we would have today. Um, and he says, now Job, where were you when all this came into being? And Job realises that really he is a creature within creation. He is not Lord of creation. And he realises too that really suffering is part of the natural world. There would be no growth without suffering. Um, it's how uh, things evolve, how things are uh, come into being, die and recreate. And so Job realises that God is, um, you know, greater than the human uh, in the world. And he accepts his place as a creature. And the interesting thing, though, is that God commends Job for his questioning. Um, and he tells this, the comforters, the friends, that they haven't spoken right about him as Job has. Um, and so it's, it, it, we do need to question. We do need to, to try to come to understand uh, what's happening in our world.